Hey guys, welcome back. Second part of the video here, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Last uh, video we solved for the stiffness matrices, we did the analytical model of the beam. Now we're going to move into assembling the structural stiffness matrix, okay, and then we're going to move into the joint load vector and the um, the joint load vector and the fixed end moment vector, which is the vector P. So let's go ahead and let's get into the question. So we, where we left off, we left off on step two, okay, which was to find the K matrices. Now we're moving on to step three. Step three is going to be... Okay, so how do we do that? So we're going to assemble our structural stiffness matrix S. So one thing to note is that our structural stiffness matrix always has dimension, number of degrees of freedom by number of degrees of freedom, always, okay? And the structural stiffness matrix is also always symmetrical about the main diagonal, okay? So if either of those things aren't happening in your question, uh, you're in trouble, okay? You've made a mistake. So with that being said, uh, let's take a look at how many number of degrees of freedom we have, okay? And we, as we can count here, we have one, two, three, four, right? So we are, we're always going back to our analytical model to check what we're doing, okay? So we have four degrees of freedom, so this is gonna be a four by four matrix. And now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer from each K matrix, okay, whenever we have uh, a, a, an entry in here that is either 1, 2, 3, or 4, okay? So it could be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, uh, 3, 3. So any, any coordinate that has 1, 2, 3, or 4 in it, in any of these matrices, we're going to put into this one. So let's start by labeling the code numbers of our structural stiffness matrix, and they're always just going to be in order and it's always gonna be the number of degrees of freedom. So it's gonna be one, if it was uh, three by three, it would be one, two, three, okay? So now we're gonna to go to K1 and we're going to look for numbers to transfer into here. So let's take a look. So we have one, one here, that's this number. So we're gonna take this number and put it in to the one, one position in this matrix. We also have two, one here. So these are also numbers we're going to take. And I like to do this in a test situation is I like to go through each matrix. And unfortunately your calculator can't really do this. You're gonna to have to do this by hand. And you're going to just go to each matrix here and you're going to highlight which numbers that you want to take into your structural stiffness matrix, okay? Okay, so we have three, two, two, so all the ones, twos, threes, and fours, all the other numbers we're not going to use for this step. But still write them down because you might need these matrices, matrices later. And finally, in the last question, we only actually have two entries here. We have three and four, so we'll have four numbers that we want to take with us. Three and four, okay? So what we've done is we need to take all of these numbers and we need to put them into this matrix, okay? So I'm going to do a couple of them to start, and then I'm just going to fill it in for you because you don't want to watch me uh, do that for, for too long because that's boring. So we have one, one. Okay, so let's just do the first entry, okay? So we have one. 13,533. I'm just going to do the, the, the rough work over here so I don't fill up my matrix, okay? So this is the first entry that we're doing right here, okay? This entry. So we're going to add up all of the different one ones that we have and all the matrix matrices, and that's going to be this entry here. So where, where do we have? We have 1, 3, 5, 3, 3, plus 3, 0, 4, 5, 0. And if we add those two up together, we're going to get a value of 43,983. Okay, and 43,983 is the number that is going to come over here, and we're going to put that in here. Okay, and it's as simple as that. So just go through all of these, and if you want to like even come over here, maybe just mark it so that you know you used it or something like that. It's up to you. You'll find the best way to do it. Do that for every single entry. So go to 2, 1, for example, 2, 1, you know, 2, 1 here, add those together take the negative width and do that for the whole matrix and you're gonna get the structural stiffness matrix. So I'm gonna fill it out, I'll fast forward it. You try it on your own and then check and see if you got the same answer as me by the end, okay? So what do we have here? We have the structural stiffness matrix S, okay? So we've assembled it. So we've gotten the K matrices and we've transferred the pertinent values of the K matrices into our S matrix. So that's step three. And we're gonna need this for the next step, okay? But I'm gonna put this to the side for now. 
All right, and we're going to come back to it, and I'm going to write out step four for you. Okay, so those are P and PF. All right, so how do we find those? Very simple, actually, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring this over here for you, just so you can take a look at the analytical model while we, uh, while we work. because we do need the analytical model for this. And we also need the initial model, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over here, okay? And I'm going to show you the analytical model and the initial model with the loads on it so you can, uh, so you can understand what's going on here, okay? So um, for the, uh, let's do the joint load vector first. So the joint load vector, we did that in the last video. Essentially, that's just if we have any uh, joints, uh, uh, the degrees of freedom, have direct point loads on them. Okay, so that would be, for example, our joint two here has a load of 200, joint three has a load of 90, uh, it's a moment, and uh, that's it, pretty much, okay? So that's, that's pretty much all uh, you need to do here. So for P, for the first part anyway, so P, which is our joint load vector, because we have four degrees of freedom. Just keep that up there for further notice. And okay, so let's take a look at, let's number our code numbers. So our first degree of freedom is here, right? And we have a negative 200 kilonewton force there. Uh, our second uh, degree of freedom is a rotation. We don't have any rotation at this point, so that's zero. Our third degree of freedom is a rotation at joint three, which we do have, but that's in the negative direction. So that's gonna be 90 kilonewton meter. And remember, we're always judging whether or not it's negative based on our analytical model. This is our sign notation. And if it's the opposite, this is going to be negative in this vector. So, and then we have uh, our fourth, which is zero. We don't have anything there. So our PF is a little different. Okay, so PF vector, which is our fixed joint force vector, uh, is essentially the fixed end moments of the, of the beam, and they're going to be transferred into our PF. So like as uh, PF also shares the same dimensions as P, it's one by the number of degrees of freedom. However, uh, we're going to need to find the fixed end moments for each member, and then we're going to need to transfer them into the our, our fixed joint force member into the correct codes, just like we did with S. So I'm going to just um, I'm going to put up the uh, the fixed end moment table that I used, okay? And then I'm just going to write in the fixed end moments. And if you want to try them, just pause the video with the fixed end moments and uh, and do it because I'm not going to just punch in numbers into calculators for you. You guys definitely don't want to see that, okay? So for the first one, we have a triangular load. So we're going to go to the triangular load uh, fixed end moment. We're just going to plug in the, and we're going to call these, and we're just going to plug in the values. So we have a 30 kilonewton load. And uh, if we go ahead and we want to find the shear and the moment, okay, at um, the left and the shear and the moment at the right. So we're going to call that uh, QF1. So that's the fixed end moments for the, uh, the first member. And we can go ahead and let's just start by labeling it, okay? So we have five. Six, one, two, all right, very good. And what are our fixed end moments? So we have the fixed end moment at B, which is the left, okay, and E is the right. So B, at the beginning and the end, is going to be, just plug it in the formula that I put on the screen, guys. If you, uh, if you get something different, just try again, okay? Make sure, I'm just, I'm not gonna do this part for you because you guys probably figured this out for yourself. So we have 54 kilonewton, meter moment on the left side is our fixed end moment. We have a, a fixed end shear on the right uh, or on the end as 27. And we have a fixed end moment at the end and that is going to be negative 36 kilonewton meter. So what we're going to do is we're just going to transfer these into here. That's it. Simple. I'm not even going to write the units. I know what they are. 4, 27, and negative 36. Perfect. So like we did before, we're only going to transfer the numbers from Q, or QFs, and we're going to have two more, and I'm just going to fast forward and write them out for you. We're only going to transfer the numbers that are have the number of degrees of freedom. Okay, so six and five we're not concerned with. What we wanted to put into PF, we're going to only be considered with the degrees of freedom or the values in the vector that correlate with the degrees of freedom. So those are going to be those two. And those are going to go up here. So let me uh, write out the last two. I'm going to fast forward this for you, and then you can come back and we can transfer.
Okay, so, and we can just go ahead and, just for practice, we can label this, but it's not going to matter in this question. So, um, what do we have here? Well, uh, as we can see, this, the fixed end moment for member two is zero because there's no external forces acting within the, within the member. But on the third member here, we do have this 150 kilonewton force acting point load in the middle. So that does cause um, another set of fixed end moments. So, uh, do we have any number entries here that correlate with degrees of freedom? We do, we have three and four. So these are also going to go up into here. And it's going to be exactly the same thing, okay? If, if we had two that were the same number, we would add them, but we don't. Okay, so we're just going to transfer these. So this is one, this is going to be two, this is three, 187.5, and this is four, negative 187.5. Okay, so that's going to be what's called our, our fixed joint force vector. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is going to be to solve the displacement. P, okay, minus PF equals SD. So that's going to be our main formula here. All right, and uh, come back for the next video. We're going to split this up into a series of videos, and we're going to solve for this. We're going to get the displacement, and we're going to finish up the question, hopefully. Thanks for watching.